evening. Welcome to our Wednesday evening service. If you'd find your place, I'd stand up, grab your hymn books, turn to page 442. Praise him, praise him. 442. God leads us along. 298.
just remain standing. Got two quick announcements. But first, I'd like to welcome you to our service. If you are visiting for the first time here at Treasure Valley Baptist Church, we as a family would like to welcome you. We do have a visitor center out in the foyer. You can stop by if you have any questions about the ministry. Uh, this Saturday at 10 a.m., we'll be doing door-to-door -door visitation. And we'll be meeting over at the Fellowship Hall. 10 a.m. over in the fellowship hall, and then men's prayer Saturday night at 7 p.m. Let's sing a song. All right, 236, Amazing Grace. Play. Go ahead and greet those around you. Second verse. Twas grace that touched my heart and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first Seated. 
It's uh, time for our midweek prayer time. If you did not get a prayer sheet when you came in, raise your hand. The ushers will get you one. Anybody need a prayer sheet? Okay, we'll start on the front with deployed servicemen, and then followed right after that is active duty military. Let's pray for our military, especially tonight, uh, and our country, if you think about that. Uh, let's pray for our out-of-town college students. We've got uh, five of them listed on the bottom there, and their names, and they're into their spring semester. And then on the back, we've got some missionaries just going alphabetical down through our list. Mark and Christy Helzerman, they're in Papua New Guinea. They're in a very remote spot. They don't have any telephone, no cell phones or internet. So they are definitely Bush missionaries. <laughs> uh, they're really uh, looking to get a national pastor to turn their work over to. So that's a prayer request for them. Next, we've got Rudiger Hemmer and his wife Sabina in Germany. Uh, no specific prayer requests at this time, but they do have a church and they have church people and church needs. So let's pray for them in Germany. Jim and Ari Herzl in Vanuatu. This is an island off of Papua New Guinea in Australia. And um, they've got a Christian day school. And they've seen a lot of the families come to know the Lord through that day school. So that's a blessing. And in one of his recent prayer letters, he said there's plenty of needs for more missionaries. So if the Lord's called you to Vanuatu, then there's, your, there's a request there. Brent Hoffman and his wife Jennifer in Costa Rica. Uh, the praise his wife, if you remember, had quite a bit of health problems here about a year ago. She's doing very well. They're running about 35 in their church there, and that's a blessing. And we can pray for his language. It's, they've been there about two years, and he still would like some prayer on his language. Moving down the list, I mentioned door-to-door -door canvassing. That's this Saturday. That's an opportunity for the whole family. Uh, missions outreach right here in our community. Saturday morning at 10 o'clock, we'll be meeting over in the fellowship hall. And then a couple sister churches we pray for each week. Uh, this week, we're praying for Calvary Baptist Church in Elma, New York. And the pastor and the church and the community there. And then we've got Heritage Baptist Church down in Yuma, Arizona area. Let's pray for those two churches. And then under other, we've got two prayer requests for you to write down. Nathan Jodeman, he's going through some health struggles right now. And then uh, Jim Sprawl, uh, Ben Brandt's uh, stepfather, has got cancer that's moved to his brain. So that's terminal. So let's pray for Jim Sprawl. If you want to pray together uh, with somebody next to you or by yourself, we'll pray for a few minutes and then we'll come back together and sing a song. Let's pray.
Father, as we continue in prayer each week, Lord, we're so thankful for this time that's set aside. And Lord, the, uh, the fact that uh, we can bring each other uh, up for you, up to you in prayer. Lord, we thank you so much for our salvation and what you've done for us. And Lord, help each one of us not to take it for granted and help us as individuals and as a church to be a lighthouse to our friends and co-workers in this community. Lord, we thank you so much for the country that we're in. We just pray, uh, Lord, uh, uh, that you'd watch over it, keep the freedoms that we've got, help us as Americans to, to take uh, advantage of what uh, we've, you've given to us, Lord, and to not take it for granted. We pray that you be at the Master Club classes going on uh, even now and all the different teachers and the clubbers and help them, Lord God, to, to have a good night and that you'd be with the Word of God that uh, it would sink in deep on those young people's hearts and help them to grow up to love you. Father, we pray that you'd be with um, the message to follow. Uh, Lord, pray that uh, you'd come and visit us and get us each one of us exactly what we need. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand and sing a song. All right, let's turn to 449. <clears throat> to God be the glory. 449. To God be the glory. Great things we have done. To love be the one that He gave us His Son. To live in His life and atonement for sin. And open the life that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear His voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Lord God, to the Father, through Jesus the Son, and give Him the glory, great things He hath done. O perfect redemption, the purchase of blood, to every believer, the promise of God, the mildest defender, who truly believes, that moment from Jesus, a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let me hear His voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh God, to the Father, through Jesus the Son, and give Him the glory, great things He had done. Great things He had taught us, great things He had done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. The new and and greater will be our wonder, our transport. You may be seated. All right. I've asked Brother Gip to preach for us tonight. So I don't have to introduce him or anything like that or say anything nice about him. He can just come up here and preach. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Take him all night trying to think something nice. Josh, right? Good to see you. Good to see you. Hey, good to be in church. Good to be saved. Amen. Amen. Um, Open your Bibles to John chapter 12, Gospel of John. Uh, imagine, <clears throat> imagine you were having a house built and uh, 
There was a guy that could do plumbing, but he couldn't do electrical work or carpenter work, but he had a brother who could do carpenter work and another brother that could do the electrical work. And so you needed three things and you got it all in the same family, correct? That's what I'm going to talk to you about tonight. Three things that are needed. And if I'd give this message a title, it would be all in a family. <clears throat> and we're going to talk about uh, Lazarus uh, and his two sisters, Martha and Mary, uh, and, and how each one provides something or, or, or has something about them uh, that is actually necessary in each Christian life. Um, it just takes three of them to do it. It'd be nice if one person get it all down. Uh, in um, John chapter 12, and look at verse 1. Uh, then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. Uh, there he ma there, there, uh, they made him a supper, uh, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with them. Let's bow our heads. Father, it is good to be saved. Lord God, we thank you so much, uh, not just that you save us, but that you keep us, uh, that you, uh, you've just taken us... Uh, into your heart. I don't even mean under your wing. You've taken us. We are a part of you. We are inside you and you're inside of us. And so thank you, God, for eternal life. Thank you, God, for eternal security. Thank you, God, we've got a good church we can come to on a Wednesday night. God, probably somebody came tonight, just didn't feel very good, almost didn't come, but they chose to come for you. So you bless them, Father, for their faithfulness to you. God, uh, I pray that you'd get Sam Gipp out of the way of these people so that they could get something from you or from something from your book because uh, they don't need to hear from me. They need something from you. So uh, bless your people, God, that they might then uh, live to your glory. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. Uh, each one of these, Lazarus, Martha, and Mary, <clears throat> each one represents uh, one particular thing that uh, is actually necessary in the Christian life. Uh, the first one, it says that uh, Lazarus got called to this supper, which uh, may, there may be some Baptist overtones there, but um, uh, that's fellowship. Guys, you need to have fellowship with the Lord. You know, uh, I don't think you have, I'm not have a problem with people that say, well, I got a friend and they're not saved, or I got a friend and they don't believe the same doctrines I, I do. I understand that, but if that's where your fellowship is, there's a problem, okay? Everybody knows somebody outside their circle that, uh, that, that may not believe everything they believe, may not be on the same page, <clears throat> and I'm not telling you that you cut yourself off from those people, but if that is where your fellowship is, if that is where your heart is, then there's a problem. And so you need to have some fellowship. Uh, uh, that's why I like church. I love, I love coming to church, guys. I really do. Uh, we raised our boys in church, and uh, we didn't have a house for 33 years, so they, they'd sleep in church. And uh, In fact, usually when I preached, uh, they slept in church. But um, uh, they'd sleep in church. You know, I'm, I'm, about, I'm talking about you know, they'd, uh, just everything they played in church. But you come to church. And, and that is good for your fellowship, just being here. Uh, isn't it good to come to church and see somebody? You just come to church, come on, it's good to see them. I'll be honest with you guys, I like seeing you. I, I like coming here, I like seeing you guys, most of you. Well, really not a whole bunch, uh, but anyway, but really, you know, you come, uh, you know, I like the handshake. I like when we take a break uh, and walk around and, uh, you know, just gas bag a little bit. I like that. I, I enjoy the fellowship at church. And again, um, if, if this is your church and you are the Lord's, the, you should gravitate here, right? You know, I like one guy said, he said, uh, we don't have to go to church. We get to go to church. And that's why I've always looked at it. So, so you come to church and you have fellowship with people that are here. Now, then you have fellowship, it's kind of a step up, after church. Now, you're all going to lose it right here. Because after church, you ask somebody to go out for a burger and say that you'll pay. And I know what you're all going to do. You're going to sit there tonight waiting for somebody to ask you so that they can pay. And then you all go home and go, see, Gip was wrong. Nobody came and asked me. That's because you all sat there waiting, waiting for somebody to ask you because you're too tight to pay, all right? But really, um, you know, we come to church. Did you ever go to church and then just go out for a burger or go out for dinner on Sunday with somebody from the church? Isn't that a step up? Isn't that better? And it's, again, it is here. Uh, and, and if you know this, if you travel, you know, we travel a lot, different churches all the time. <clears throat> and uh, uh, sometimes we'll have an open Sunday uh, and have to be in a church we've never been. 
And you ever meet somebody in a church, you went and visited a church, and it was, it was like this church? And I mean, you met somebody that day and you felt like you knew them for years, all right? And so you have fellowship uh, at church, you have fellowship after church, and then you have personal fellowship. That's where you say, hey, why don't we go out? Hey, why don't you guys come on over for dinner? We would like to have fellowship with you. Uh, I'll be honest, uh, I, you know, I, I say it jokingly, uh, you know, I tell people Kathy and I are party animals, but not the, not the world's party, but we are always ready for fellowship. You know, I go to meetings and they'll go, now after church, if you don't do anything, I say, are you kidding me? Man, we're ready to party after church. Now, I don't mean we're gonna go wild, I mean just go have a burger and have some fellowship. That's, if you wanna know the truth, uh, I have guys that they'll, they'll go, we don't wanna do anything with you after church because we don't wanna tire you out. And this is the truth. I said, it is that fellowship after church that charges our batteries so that we can keep going. And, and haven't you ever been blessed by fellowship you have with somebody? Yeah, yeah. And so here's what fellowship is good with, for. It's good for us. It's good for you, right? I mean, it's good. You get something from it. You, you have fellowship with somebody. Uh, do you ever have uh, time with somebody? And when you walk away, you say, boy, wasn't that nice? Don't you feel encouraged? Uh, isn't it nice to know somebody else, uh, you know, has the problems that we have, or uh, they, they answered a question I had, or gave me some direction on something? <clears throat> and so, um, so fellowship is good for us. Now think about this. How about having fellowship with the Lord? Um, people will brush shoulders with somebody important sometime in their life. Uh, I think they say that um, Jack Hiles one time got an elevator, and Elvis Presley was on the same elevator. Uh, I knew a guy that literally said he went into a restroom and there was some sports figure there, you know. I, I, knew, I knew a pilot that had to fly Princess Die. Uh, Princess died now. But anyway, uh, Princess Die someplace. And every time he meets somebody, he tells them that he did that. Okay, guys, so once I was getting off a plane and I went through first class and the guy was still getting his bags down, it was, uh, uh, man, it was uh, Bear Bryant, the football coach. And, um, you know, I asked if he wanted to sign his Bible. Uh, he didn't make his day. Anyway, but you see what I'm saying? I mean, if anybody that, that is famous asks you to dinner, isn't everybody you know going to know about it? How about the Lord Jesus Christ? I mean, if the Lord said, I want to have fellowship with you. And here's the kick, guys. You couldn't get into it. You know, I don't know who's going to win the Super Bowl, but you probably couldn't get in to their home for fellowship. But the God of the universe wants to have fellowship with every one of you. And, and again, that's good for you. So fellowship uh, is, is good for us. Uh, take a look at, uh, keep your place here, but take a look at Luke, Luke, Luke chapter 10. Keep your place in John. In Luke chapter 10, <clears throat> we'll pick it up in verse 38. Now it came to pass, as they went, that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. Uh, and she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving, and came to him, and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she may help me. Now Martha, where Lazarus represents fellowship, Martha represents service. Now, I'm going to be very honest with you. Uh, when people first get saved, they come to church, and you know what they get? Fellowship. But after you've been there for a while, it's kind of like you ought to start doing something, okay? Just, just get some service. Uh, and, and she is the one that was always serving. Go back to John chapter 12, and look what we just read this verse, verse 2. <clears throat> there they made him a supper, and Martha served. I will guarantee you in Bethany, if anybody was having anything, any kind of a to-do, everybody knew that Martha was going to be there to serve. I, I'm, I'm just guessing, but I bet she had the best recipes in the, in, the, in the village. I'll bet you she could cook, but she was the lady that was very efficient, all right? Um, take a look at John chapter 11, and this is when her brother Lazarus dies. <clears throat> Now, 
if, uh, if you had somebody in your family die and you heard someone was coming because they died, you know, like, like, all right, somebody in your family dies and, and somebody says the pastor's on his way over, then you know the pastor's going to get there, right? And would you wait for him? Not Martha. Martha's one of those get her done type people. She, she knows the Lord's coming. Look what it says in chapter 11. John chapter 11, look at verse 20. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Now, I don't even think she's, I don't even think she's like mad at him. I think she understands. You know what, you know what Martha is? Martha is a worker. And sometimes Marthas are ridiculed or belittled because all they think about is work. But let me tell you something. It's Martha's. Martha's are the reason you have a clean bathroom. It, it's Martha's that, uh, I don't know who the Martha was Sunday morning that made those cinnamon rolls, but those got to be a controlled substance. There's got to be a law against that. They're going to tax that. But really, guys, I mean, it is the Marthas that make the plans. Uh, if nobody plans anything out, have you ever, it's, it's, it's kind of like, it's like throwing a rock in a flock of chickens. They just go everywhere and there's no, there's no pattern to it. It is a Martha that says, okay, here's how we're going to do this. We're going to do this and this and this. And here's what Martha knows. Martha knows what she can do. She knows what she can do. And she knows she's going to do it. I don't think she went to the Lord like, uh, you let us down. I think she knows I couldn't keep my brother alive. My sister doesn't have the power to keep my brother alive. But I know the Lord had the power. And, and, and he's, why, I wonder why he didn't get it done. Why, why weren't you here? This is part of your job. I mean, my job is, is, is coming about much serving. My job is serving at the tables. I, I do my job. I know what I'm supposed to do, but I know what you can do. Well, where were you? And guys, sometimes, uh, sometimes you gotta get to where you do some service. Um, you know, one of the things about service, think about this. Is it a server always thinking about somebody else? Yes. And that's the service. In fellowship, we get the blessing. That's good for us. We get to go to the dinner. We get to sit with Jesus. We get to have fellowship. We get to tell everybody, oh yeah, I was invited. Oh, you weren't invited. <laughs> and, uh, and we get to tell them how wonderful the night was. Fellowship is good for us. Service is, be, is where we do something that is good for someone else. Uh, I don't know what you do, guys, but um, <clears throat> I appreciate people that serve. Uh, spend a lot of time in motels. If you ever get anybody that doesn't know how to do housekeeping, you appreciate somebody that does. Uh, if you ever go to a restaurant and you get somebody that doesn't know how to wait on a table, you appreciate somebody that does. Uh, I really do. I thank them. I thank them. Uh, you may not do this. Can I give you some advice? <clears throat> when you're on the interstate, get out of the truck driver's way. People like to get in the left lane and go, well, I'm going to make them keep the speed limit. You know, unless you have a badge, a gun, and, and you get a paycheck from the state, that's not your job. Well, let me explain something. You know how you got the clothes on your back? A truck driver brought them. The carpet on this floor, the food that you ate tonight, right? A truck driver, why don't you? People, they're bringing food. They're bringing food. Get out of their way. And, and you have no idea how many times, you know, again, we'll be, we'll be stopping at a truck stop someplace <clears throat> on the road, and, uh, and like a guy will be coming in, uh, as I'm leaving, or, or he's leaving as I'm coming out, and I'll stop. I'll say, you truck driver. he go, yeah. i go, thanks for what you do. You ought to see their face. How many people thank truck drivers for being truck drivers? No, everybody likes to be more righteous than them, and, you know, they're all a bunch of, uh, you know, immoral, no good. No, I'll tell you what they are. They're working men, and some women, okay? Some of them have been injured, because I see them, they have, they have their heads wrapped up. But... Um, <laughs> <clears throat> but that's a service job, guys. That's a service job. They serve you. The, 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 the waitress and the waiter, they serve you. And so there should be, at some point, don't you think the Lord ought to profit from us? Doesn't it talk about in Luke chapter 7 about us being a profitable or an unprofitable servant? And so you start out with fellowship, and that's Lazarus, but at some point, you have got to get into some service. Go knock on some doors, pass out some tracks, find something that you can do for the Lord. You know, we, uh, 
a pastor and his wife were over, a bunch of you were over uh, Monday. I went out to New Plymouth to Brother uh, Milt Hickey's uh, memorial service. And, and I told my wife, I said, you know what Milt Hickey was? He was a, he was a Christian who couldn't do nothing. He couldn't do nothing. All of his life, they gave testimonies about his life, and all of his life, you know what you found? Milt Hickey, Milt Hickey saw something that needed done and just did it. He was always doing something for the Lord. He was always serving the Lord in some way. And guys, you ought to say, okay, okay, Lord, how can I give you some service? And, and guys, when we serve, other people benefit. I, I don't know if you believe this or not, but I've, uh, I've gone into churches where I was preaching and I cleaned the bathrooms because the bathrooms are horrible. I was in this church in New York one time and um, uh, there was a fluorescent light right over the uh, pulpit and we started Sunday morning and that light, of all things, just start, started flashing off and on. Okay, okay, understand it. Sunday morning, Sunday night, understand it. It was a Sunday through Friday meeting. I can understand that the thing goes bad when the, pre when the meeting starts. Why is it flashing Monday night? Why is it flashing Tuesday night and Wednesday night and Thursday night? I mean, it's like preaching in a lightning storm. It was flashing every night. Some man should get up here and put the ballast in it. Also, <clears throat> the walls, the walls are kind of like this color. And then there were some nicks and gouges in them. So one of, you can always tell when a man does something, he takes his spackling and he does it, puts that spackling on there. And then it looks like the whole wall had leprosy because there were white spots all over it and they just never got around to paint. Oh, I'm going to paint that someday. You ever go to some, some man's house and you're having dinner and there's a piece of molding this long missing and he sees you look, hey, well, I, I've got that in the garage. I'm going to put that up someday. Yeah, after the rapture. So, so here was all this stuff that these men had not, had, had not done. The bathrooms were filthy. That's not the men's fault. The floors were filthy. That's not the men's fault. And so uh, I got to be honest with you. Friday night I got up and I said, folks, I said, uh, I don't know if God is in this message. But I said, I need to preach it and you need to hear it. And just ripped their faces off. I ripped the men's faces off on not taking care of their church building. I ripped the ladies' faces off on not, on not cleaning the place up. Now, here's what's funny. You know, I'm always taught to tell people about read the Bible, read the Bible, read the Bible. So I'll go to a meeting where I've been before, and, and a pastor, I'll say something about reading the Bible, and then the pastor's going to go, see, I told you he was going to say something about reading the Bible when he got here. Yeah, I told you you better read your Bibles because God's going to say something about reading the Bible. In that church, where I thought, this guy just loved the meeting. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night. I mean, he was just blessed and, and happy. And Friday night, he wasn't there. And I said, where's Brother so-and-so? And he goes, oh, I knew he wouldn't be here. Why? He says, he always makes sure he misses one night of the meeting just to show he doesn't want to be taken for granted. And I thought, well, that's like a monument to stupidity. Do you know what taken for granted is? That means somebody knew he was going to do it. I had a guy in my church. I call him a grown-up. He's about six foot four, six foot five. Uh, our ceiling was a little bit lower than this one, and we had those brass chandelier type lights with the with the flame-shaped bulbs. This guy's name was Walt, 
And <clears throat> Walt could stand on the back of the edge of the pew and reach those lights. And Walt took it upon himself. I never asked him, nobody ever asked him. He'd just see a burnout bulb and he would just change the bulb. Now, you're sitting down. It's so good you're sitting down because this would knock some of you down if you were standing up. If the church didn't have any bulbs, he bought them. No, oh, wait a second. It's worse than that. And didn't give me the receipt for his giving record. I mean, he actually paid cash and ate the receipt. Like, he, like $2.50 for God. But let me tell you what happened. One Sunday morning, I'm preaching. And about four lights back, I see a burnout bulb. And, and while I'm preaching, I thought, I need to tell Walt that bulb's burnout. And I said, no, I don't. Walt will see it, and he'll do it. And, and I got done preaching, and after I was done, I see Walt. He saw that light bulb. Guys, I go into churches, and I look at lights. And I, when I look at those chandeliers, I, I'm up there preaching, I go, there's a burnout bulb there, there's two out in that, one over here. That ought not to be. Joe Pasola. Joe Pasola serves here. And, you know, somebody does something that, that everybody sees, uh, you make a big deal of it, but, but Joe keeps everything working here. That's called service. God ought to profit from you. So I know we talk about Mary. I don't think she was the carnal one. She's just one of those get her done people. She just, hey, come on, let's not stand around. Let's do something. So, so in Lazarus, you have the, the fellowship, and that is good for him. And in, in Martha, you have the service, and that is good for others. But in, go back to, to um, Luke chapter 10 again. And look what it says, um, <clears throat> verse 39. But she had a sister called Mary, this Martha had one. Uh, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, uh, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. It was, you know what Mary is uh, representative of? worship. Mary was sitting at his feet. Mary is the one who walked in and, and took her alabaster box and broke it and then washed his, his, his feet with it. Uh, that's humiliating. I, I had a friend of mine, he was a Plymouth brethren at one time, and then he left there and became a Chevrolet brethren. But, um, and he said, uh, you know, they wash feet in their church. Now, I believe in foot washing. I really do. I wish... More people would do it. But um, I also believe in toothbrushing or teeth brushing. I wish they'd have put that one in the Bible. But, um, but he says, and he said, you know, he said, I know it wasn't a doctrine in the Bible. I know it's not an ordinance. But he said, it's one of the most humiliating and humbling things I ever did to wash somebody else's feet. You know, there's things that uh, you may say, well, I'm not going to do that. Well, I'm better than that. Well, I'm not, going to, I'm not going to embarrass myself. Guys, worship embarrasses you. Worship costs you something. You know, I, I don't know if this is true. You know, sometimes we preachers, we hear an illustration. We take it as fact. But let me tell you what I heard about the alabaster box. You know, I don't know if they do this anymore. Uh, in, in, when, of course, I never had one. But in my generation, all the girls had what they called a hope chest. And they put all this stuff away for when they got married. They were hoping to, to use it someday. Now they have a charge card and they just, it's all new the day they get married. But, um, you know, in those days, uh, the woman had to have a dowry of some kind. And they said that, what I've heard told is that that alabaster, that ointment was, was very expensive, very valuable. And that was what was going to give her some value for whoever wanted to marry her. In other words, that was going to be, look, this is all I got, but this is very expensive. This is, this is very valuable. And so that was her hope. 
for when she got married, if that is the case. And you know what she did? She broke it and put it on his feet. I mean, it isn't even like she sold it and got some money. It isn't even like she gave it to him and said, here, Lord, you sell it and, and benefit from it. I mean, she put it on his feet. And so worship costs you something, guys. Worship. Fellowship is good for us. Service is good for others. That's who benefits from service. But you know who benefits from worship? The Lord. If I go, if I have fellowship, hey, I'm telling you, when I have fellowship, I, I get blessed. I don't know if anybody else gets blessed, but I get blessed. That is good for me. When I serve, that's supposed to be good for somebody else. But when I worship, I don't get nothing. The Lord gets it. And guys, um, you need the fellowship and you need the, you need the service, but you need the worship. And I'll tell you something right now, worship when it starts to cost us something, that's where some people slam on the brakes. Um, Second Samuel chapter 24, uh, David is uh, he's buying the uh, threshing floor of Aruna, uh, and Aruna says, oh, there's been three days of a plague, 70,000 people die, and, uh, and David says, I wanna buy your threshing floor, I gotta make an offering uh, to stop this plague, and you know what Aruna says? He says, oh, king, king, the land is yours, here's my oxen, here's my, I mean, the guy's given his, his implements away. He's, he's putting himself out of, out of the farming business. He said, take the oxen and take the, the implements for the, for, the, for the fire and take the land. It's all yours. You know what David said? This is proof that David was not a Baptist. He said, I'll not worship God with something that costs me nothing. You know, sometimes you got to, you, you know what you got to do sometimes? So I'd rather not have the freebie. I am so, I am so saddened that, that Everybody is always, I'm sorry, everybody is looking for a handout. Everybody is looking for something free. I'm talking about us. Because again, whenever you hear that somebody gave somebody something, you never say, well, that's a great idea. I think I'll give that to somebody. You always say, how do I get in the getting line? How do I get somebody to give that to me? Or somebody bought tires for him. What was the name again? Uh, have you seen my tires? I'm just wondering, just wondering. Instead of, why don't I buy tires for somebody? Why don't I do something? And, it's, and it, when it comes to worship, guys, I don't know that you can worship the Lord without it costing you something. If it didn't cost her her dowry, if it did not cost her that ointment, it cost her, I mean, didn't people say things about her? Who does she think, does he know who, does he know who that woman is? I mean, everybody badmouthed her. She got mocked in John chapter 12 for what she did, right? And so, hey, you know, that's what they, you know, I had, a, I had a guy when I first got saved, old buddy of mine, and, um, and I started witnessing to him. Shocked to find out that he was already saved. But, but he said this, he said, well, Sam, he said, I think religion's like a steak. If you overcook it, it's just not very good. And I said, that's what I believe about a steak. But you get these people, well, you know, I don't want, they don't want this love they have for the Lord. They don't want it to cost them anything. I, I, I could almost venture to say that if, if your salvation and your worship for the Lord hasn't cost you something, I don't know that you've ever worshiped. I was in California a couple of years ago on the third floor of a motel and um, come in for the morning service. You know how the first floor, they got those... Uh, you know, rooms for rent, convention center type rooms, event centers. And as I'm walking down the hall, I hear, I, there, there's, a, there's a sign for this contemporary church that's meeting in this conference, conference room. And I'm standing, now look guys, I know that they use rock music. Nobody worships God with rock music. Amen. Okay, Amen. I'm gonna tell you that. Nobody worships, you say, well, I know somebody goes to church. I didn't, they can go to church with rock music. They don't worship God with rock music. So I know that they use it. But you know, when I'm standing, I'm standing here in this hallway and, and like there's the wall on the other side of that wall. I mean, the drum, I haven't heard drums like that since I was lost. The places I went when I was lost, that's the music I heard. And I stood there and I thought, don't even kid yourself. They aren't even, don't even kid yourself. 
You cannot worship God with that kind of stuff. And we got so many people, they don't want to have to give up anything for God. They don't want them to change their life. They don't want them to change their habits. They don't want them to change their, 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 their lifestyle. I mean, they won't change their clothes. They won't change their jokes. They won't change, change their goals. They, don't want, they, they want to worship God. And that's what they do. I mean, hey, come on, guys. What do you like to do? You like to golf. Well, why don't you worship God with golf? Yes, I'm going golfing today. I'm worshiping God with golf. Well, you can't worship God with golf. How do you think you can use, you do with rock music? I like cars. I think I'll go to a car show and worship God. See what I'm saying? You do what you want to do, and then you say you're worshiping God. God isn't even in the room. Do you understand? And I'll tell you, at some point, if you're going to worship him, you're going to have to give something up. She gave up whatever the value was of the, of the ointment that she had in that alabaster box. She gave that up. Uh, I don't know if I ever said this here. I have a question. I don't have the answer. And I get questions. I seek answers. I am not seeking the answer. I'm not interested in the answer to this question. You know what the question is? I don't know. I don't know if I still like the taste of beer. Maybe I still like the taste of beer. You say, well, how would you know? I don't know. I haven't had it in almost 50 years. I got saved. I quit drinking. I liked the taste of the stuff when I quit. I might still like it. See, I didn't quit because I didn't like it anymore. I quit for him. I mean, isn't there something that you could walk away from? Isn't there something you can say, I'm going to give that up for him? And we got a generation now, you know what the attitude is? The attitude is they want to come up to a pastor and say, it is not fair, pastor, that I should have to, that my Christianity should cost me anything. I shouldn't have to say no to myself about anything. And I'm not talking even about sin. It's every toy, every fun, every game, every party, uh, you know, life, laughter, and uh, lust. I can't remember what the three words are, but, but, um, you know, that's what it's all about. I remember when it was, uh, I remember when it was work, witness, and worship. <laughs> and now it's all life, laughter, and something else. But guys, worship, you get nothing from. That's why people don't like to do it. The Lord gets something from that. So you know what happens when you get saved? You start out with fellowship. You go to church. That's what I did. I got saved. I went to church. And then I started going to visitation. I started serving. And, uh, and so you have Lazarus is the fellowship. Martha, and we need Martha. Martha is the service, but Mary is the worship. She just sits there at his feet. She just looks at him, humble, serene, sacrificing. And she's the only one that prepared his body for the grave. So fellowship is good, but there's more to it than that. You need service. But fellowship and service are good, but there's more to it than that. You need worship. I'd like you to stand with your heads bowed. Oh, wait. I just want to show you one thing. Look at chapter 11 of John. Because here's what we do with these three. We look at, especially Martha, we look at her as like she's kind of uh, low level. She's not as spiritual as Mary. But take a look at verse 5. Isn't this nice? Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. He loved all three of them, didn't he? He didn't, he didn't restrict his love from the one that did nothing but eat his food. He didn't restrict, restrict the one that was covered about much serving. And he didn't even mention Mary by name here, but he loved all three of them. And so I got news for you guys. You don't have to do a thing for God. He'll still love you. But you ought to do something if you love him. I'd like you to stand. Just a moment, I'm going to have a word of prayer, the musical play. What do you need to add to your life? You need some fellowship? Fellowship with the Lord? Fellowship with God's people? Are you a visitor to church, but, but uh, you don't, uh, don't ask anybody out? You don't get any fellowship with anybody? Maybe you need to work on that fellowship thing. Don't stand around like a big nosed girl at a dance waiting for somebody to ask you. Ask somebody else. 
You need fellowship. You need service. What are you doing for anybody else? How are you serving? There ought to be something you can do. And what has your worship cost you? What have you given up for him? He's worth giving up anything. I got news for you. He's worth anything. So what does it cost you? Father, thank you for your goodness and your grace. You, you don't come short in anything. You don't, you don't fail at anything. You don't fall short in anything. You don't do anything halfway. The crucifixion, God, your death was not, was not halfway. So thank you, God, for what you do. God, I pray for these people. I like these people. I love these people. I pray, God, that we have fellowship in church, after church, at our homes, that our fellowship is because of you and around you. Help these folks with fellowship. But then help them move up to the next one to service. We ought to serve somebody else. We ought to do something for somebody. And help us, God, knock on doors, visit, uh, buy something for somebody that needs it. Help us to serve. And then God, help us to worship you and be willing to give something up. Be willing to let our worship for you cost us something. I pray, God, there's people here. They know what they need. So you spoke to somebody tonight. And I pray, God, they make the change in their life tonight that they need. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. With your heads bowed and eyes closed as the instruments play, if you need to come and talk to the Lord, why don't you come? Seventeen, come down fountain as we sing. something tonight? Praise the Lord. All right. Good night. You are dismissed.